Hey, what's happening, gang? Bobby Spellman here with a dynamic crossover episode, combining my Trumpet with Bob series with my brand new series, Arranging with Bob. Today I'd like to talk about the various different mutes that you can use to color the trumpet, and I hope this video is useful both for trumpet players interested in expanding their timbral palette, as well as composers and arrangers interested in the different ways that you can color the instrument, both in a trumpet section as well as for solo trumpet material. So I hope this is helpful. We're going to dive right in to some of the varying mutes that you can use to color the trumpet. All right, roll those intros. <laughs> All right, before we dive into the tonal color of these different mutes, I wanted to distinguish between the more common mutes that you could expect to see and specialty mutes. So I'm going to put these mutes into two different categories. There are five mutes that you can expect that a trumpet player will have in his or her arsenal. And if you are a trumpet player, you should be sure to pick these up and have them on hand in case a composer writes for one of these mutes. Those mutes are the straight mute, the cup mute, the bucket mute, the Harmon mute, and the plunger mute. At any time, you're welcome as an arranger or composer to write for any of those mutes and expect that people will have them on hand. Now, there are a bunch of other mutes that are a little bit more specialty items that people may or may not carry with them at any given time. Those are also super fun to write for, and as a trumpet player, they are fun to play with. But I'm going to put them in a second category, uh, just to distinguish between what you can expect to find all the time and what may be kind of a specialty color that you can add to your arsenal. All right, on the first stop on our mute safari, we have here what is the most basic and most common mute the world over, and that is the straight mute. The straight mute, for all of you audio nerds and synthesists out there, serves as a high pass filter. It filters out some of the lower tones on the instrument, and it gives it a little bit more of a bright, perhaps a little bit more of a shrill tone. This is most commonly used in classical music, although you might also find it in big band music, jazz, and uh, various other styles of music. All right, so to begin, I'm going to play a couple notes on the trumpet open, just so you can hear what the tone of the instrument is, and then I will add the mute so that you can hear the way that the mute changes the color of the instrument. Here we go. Now we're going to add the straight mute. All right, there you can see the way that the straight mute colors the sound of the trumpet. Uh, the straight mute, more than many of the other mutes, really allows a lot of sound out of the trumpet, so you can get a lot of volume out of it. And once again, it's very common in classical music. So if you happen to be playing a piece of orchestral music or band repertoire, and you just see the word mute written in, you can assume it to mean a straight mute. Now that being said, it can also be played in jazz, although it's so uncommon in jazz that as a jazz musician, I've managed to make it almost my entire life without having to have a straight mute. And usually when people ask me to do it, I'll just pull the cup off of my cup mute. But always a good one to have on hand. They are inexpensive and they come up very frequently. All right, moving right along, we have another one of the most common mutes you will see, the cup mute. Now the cup mute is simply a straight mute with a cup attached to the end of it. And sometimes they are adjustable and sometimes they are fixed. Much like the straight mute serves as a high pass filter and cuts out some of the lower tones, the cup mute kind of shapes the sound by removing some of the higher overtones and the lower tones. So you get a little bit of a different color from the cup mute. Uh, I think often about Dizzy Gillespie playing A Night in Tunisia or Clifford Brown playing Delilah. It's used very frequently in solo jazz trumpet, uh, in varying small group jazz trumpet uh, pieces as well as in big band sections. All right, so if I pull the cup out a little bit and have it about halfway in, which is where you'd normally find it, you get a sound like this. It's a very easy mute to play, it gives it a very beautiful tone, kind of mellows the sound out a little bit, so it's a great thing to use in small group jazz, as well as in whole trumpet sections. Now, I'll show you one more thing. In this particular instance, this is a mute that has an adjustable cup, so I will be able to pull the cup in a little bit, and that's going to quiet the sound a little bit and give it a different tone. You'll be able to hear what that sounds like with the cup pushed in all the way. 
Now typically you just have the cup pulled out a little bit, you'd have it in there about halfway, uh, and you get a very nice little color. If you push it in all the way, it mellows the sound out quite a lot, makes it just a little bit stuffier to play, but you can use that for uh, you know, quieting the trumpet down for background passages and various things like that. There you have it, the cup mute. All right, third on our list of common mutes is the bucket mute. These used to be made out of buckets, but now they are made by music companies. Now this one is the Stoneline Velvetone Mute. It is a bucket looking thing with some little arms on the side to hold it onto the bell and some material on the inside to quiet the sound of the instrument, change the tone a little bit. All right, so you can attach this to the end of your bell. It looks like this, and it's gonna mellow out the sound quite a bit of the trumpet. So I'll tell you what, once again, I'm gonna give you the sound of the trumpet open and then I'm gonna add the bucket mute so you can hear the way that it changes the timbre of the instrument. Once again, the bucket mute is a very easy mute to play. It uh, gives you a lot of leeway when you're playing an instrument. It doesn't feel too stuffy, but it does mellow the sound of the instrument out quite a bit. So if you've got an entire trumpet section and you're looking for a very mellow tone for the whole section, you can put everybody in bucket mutes and you're going to get a very nice, warm, velvety tone. All right, fourth on our list of common mutes is my favorite mute of all time, the Harmon mute. Now sometimes this will be referred to as a wah-wah mute because of the sound that you can make with your hand and what is called the stem. However, it was most popularized by Miles Davis, who would play it without the stem. And it's a very interesting mute because you get very starkly different colors from it, depending on whether you're using the stem or whether you're playing it without the stem. So the stem is this little piece that moves in and out of the rest of the mute. And depending on whether that's in or out, you're gonna get a very different color from the mute. So we're gonna start it with the stem in. This is less common, this is kind of an old timey sound, and you can make some funny sounds with your hand and the wah-wah uh, component of the mute. All right, here's what that sounds like. Now, depending on whether the stem is all the way in or halfway out, you're also going to get a slightly different timbre from the stem. With the stem halfway out, you get a little bit of a mellower tone, but you can still use that hand technique to get a little bit of a wah-wah out of it. Now, the stem in, you get kind of an old-timey, funny sound. You can use it for that wah-wah technique. Everybody loves it. It's a crowd favorite. You know what I mean? Throw that wah-wah in there. Everybody's going to go nuts. It's going to be a great time. But if you want to really get that silky, smooth, beautiful Miles Davis tone out of the instrument, your best bet is to put that stem aside and play it with the Harmon Mute stemless. If you're writing for trumpet, it is useful to indicate whether you want it stem in or stem out, but nine times out of 10, you're not gonna use the stem with a Harmon mute because you're trying to get that classic Miles Davis sound. This can be used in a whole section. It can be used in solo trumpet music. It's most commonly used for trumpet players trying to get that beautiful ballad, smoky Miles Davis tone out of the instrument. So Harmon mute, no stem, very different character. It's a very different approach and it's gonna sound like this. All right, moving along, we have another crowd favorite, the plunger mute. This is literally made out of a plunger. I went to a hardware store, bought a plunger, cut a hole in it like Clark Terry told me to do, and uh, here we have a wonderful mute that works in many circumstances. Once again, this is very common to see in big band jazz music or in soloistic trumpet, jazz music, you know, improvised music and things of that nature, as well as in old 
uh, trad jazz and more traditional styles of music. Uh, this is a really fun mute, and you can expect that any trumpet player should have one on hand. They're about $4 at a hardware store. Uh, you just have to get one at a hardware store, get a little one that fits in your hand easily, fits over the bell easily, cut a hole in it, you're good to go. And if you're a composer or arranger, toss it in there. It's a great sound. Uh, one thing that you want to remember as a composer or arranger is that you can indicate whether the plunger is supposed to be open or closed with an X for closed or an O for open. And when you read that in big band music uh, in particular, uh, you can see that that is where the mute is supposed to go, so you get these different sounds. Now closed, the mute's gonna sound like this. Open. You get slightly different intonation when it's closed, so you wanna be aware of that as you go. It changes the intonation a little bit. It also makes it a little bit stuffier to play, obviously, with the mute closed. But the most powerful approach using the plunger technique is to get that wah-wah sound. The plunger mute is very commonly matched with a growl. You can, you can uh, write that in the music, growl with a plunger mute. People know what to do, and then as trumpet players, we can use a, use a growl sound or a flutter tongue to create that effect. You can check out my video on growling and flutter tonguing for the whole explanation on that one, but it's gonna sound like this. And that's a beautiful sound, crowd favorite, everybody has a good time, and at some point on the gig, somebody's gonna come up to you and say, is that a real plunger you're using there? Is that, what you, where'd you get that? And you can tell them that you took it off your home toilet plunger and gross everybody out. Super fun, you gotta love it, plunger's a classic. All right, so that brings us to the end of the five most common mutes that you will find. That is the straight mute, cup mute, bucket mute, harmon mute, and plunger mute. Once again, if you're a trumpet player, you should have those in your bag of tricks, and as an arranger or composer, you can feel comfortable writing for those, knowing that they will very likely have them on hand. All right, gang, this video is starting to get pretty long, and we haven't even started to cover any of these specialty mutes. So I'm going to cut this bad boy into two parts, and you've just reached the end of part one. Be sure to stay tuned for our next episode, in which I will discuss many of the specialty mutes you can use to color the sound of the trumpet. Uh, be sure to leave any questions or comments in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you, and I'll catch you on the next one. All right, friends, thanks so much for checking out this video. I hope it helps in your pursuit of the majesty of musical self-expression. If you like what we're doing here, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Big thanks to all the new subscribers. We really appreciate your support, and we're going to keep putting out some new videos for you. The Ridgewood School of Music is now accepting new students for lessons online as well as in person in the Brooklyn, Queens, and greater New York City area. You can find us on our website at www.ridgewoodschoolofmusic.com and you can send us a message and we would love to help you achieve all of your musical dreams. For some more musical fun, you can also follow me, Bobby Spellman, on Instagram at Bob Spellman or in any of the other social media platforms listed in the description below. Thanks again for checking out this video. Happy practicing, and we'll catch you next time.